that time of the year again. The time where I review an obscure Italian film that no one has ever heard of. Except for in Italy where it was a box office hit. And my views tank so hard I have to leave the internet. So what is this obscure movie? Well, I'm of course talking about Paolo Genovese's The Place. In The Place, the fate of ten people seem to be intertwined. And at the end of all this is the man that can grant you any wish. As long as you carry out the task he gives you. Last year, Paolo Genovese wrote and directed my favorite movie, um, Perfetti Sconocciuti, if you remember, or Perfect Strangers. Um, it wasn't the best movie of all time, but it was at least my favorite of 2017. So when I found out that his new movie was going to screen here in Sweden, once again, not in any sort of festival or some obscure little art house cinema, but in, at actual mainstream cinemas and theaters, I was so excited, I was so happy. Because it's, it's a rare occurrence these days that I'm actually genuinely excited for a movie. So once again, me and my mom... went and saw an Italian drama on a Saturday afternoon. However, this time we were not as pleasantly surprised. Like I said before, uh, the story of the place, the place where all this is happening, the story of the place is that there is a man that sits in a cafe. He just sits there with a huge notebook and drinks coffee or eats a sandwich or whatever. He will grant the wish of whomever sits down opposite him, but in return they'll have to perform a task for him. Now, this task can be a small thing like helping ten older women across the street, but it can also be a heinous act like raping a woman. At the start of the film we're introduced to you know, people and their wishes. We also get to know what their tasks are. And as more and more people come into this cafe, to the place, um, to get their wish granted, we realize that a lot of the tasks this man gives to some of the people coincide with the wishes of other. For instance, um, a mechanic wants to have a, one night, just one night, of passionate love making with this certain supermodel, because he has a poster up of her in his garage. His task, then, is to protect a, a certain girl, a little girl, a child. Why, he doesn't know. The, the man with the huge notebook just tells him, you have to protect this little girl from harm. The same day, another man wishes that his son won't die from cancer. His son is in the hospital. So his task is to kill a child. Not a specific child, just a child to sort of take his son's place. But almost by coincidence, these two men are now pitted against each other. Because the child the father picks is of course this little girl that the mechanic has to protect. It's it's almost as if this is all planned by this man that can grant wishes. But in other instances, it seems as if he does not, you know, have control over the situation. Um, a blind man comes in and he wants to get his sight back. And in order to do this, he has to rape a woman. The same day a nun comes in and wants to find her faith again. She wants to feel the presence of God. In order to do this, she has to get pregnant. Obviously, this is a bit of a problem for a nun, but she compromises and says that she can't just get pregnant with anyone. It has to be with a person she loves or has feelings for, at least. So, this man that grants wishes is, like, appalled when he figures out later um, that the blind guy has chosen the nun as his rape victim. And therein lies the big fundamental problem with the place. You're never really able to grasp what the point of all this is. Is it a story about bad people being punished? Well, not really. The nun is inherently a good person. Is it an allegory for human nature? Is, is this man, this man that grants wishes, is he a representation of God or, or the devil? Well, I, I don't know, but right from the start, it feels, or you, you think it feels, 
like the fate of these ten people will all intertwine, and that order shall rise from the chaos that this man has created. But in the end, though, nothing really happens. Some of the wishes and tasks intermingle, but others are just fixed by themselves. Is it interesting to see how he manages to grant these wishes without actually doing anything? You know, there's no magic involved, he doesn't like touch him, touch the man to give him his sight back or anything like that. Yes, that is still interesting to watch. Felt like the whole, the whole movie, everything was just moving towards some sort of grand conclusion in the end where everything would just match up. But instead, everything just fizzles out into one big anti-climax. And, yeah, then the movie ends. None of, the, uh, none of the questions that the audience asks are answered, and it almost feels like the writers sort of painted themselves into a corner with all these characters and their intertwining stories, and that they basically just said, like, well, this, this works out, he gets his wish, he he's safe now and 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 everyone everyone is happy because spoilers that's basically how it ends yeah wow i know this sounds like a truly terrible movie well it isn't not exactly while i can't say that this is one of the greatest movies of all time there are still a lot of things i love about the movie first and foremost the acting since the entire movie takes place in a cafe and almost always at this one table, the actors really have to carry the, the, like, the weight of the movie. And without talented actors, this movie would have been an unbearable slog. But because of these actors, many of them returning from uh, Paolo Genovese's last movie, Perfect Strangers, and, and also the Razor Sharp uh, dialogue, this movie becomes pretty entertaining despite its major flaws. There is basically no supporting cast in this movie. Every character is integral to the story, and therefore every character is given an equal amount of screen time. Alright, there is one character that could be considered minor, but, you know, still. There's still. And therefore, every actor has to bring their A-game, which they definitely do. Despite the movie's kind of fantastical setting, you never question the motivations and the characterizations of, of these characters. The actors really manages to suck you into this movie and make you make you believe in every instance that these are actual people. And in terms of cinematography though, there isn't much to speak of because the entire movie is basically two, sometimes three people sitting at a table and talking. You know, that's why the, the actor have the actors have to bring their A-game. Um, but Fabrizio Lucci, the, the cinematographer, does the best of the situation and manages to make every conversation interesting in its own way by accentuating the emotions and convictions of each character with the cinematography. It is, however, in the end, just people sitting at a table and talking. At least in Perfect Strangers, which he also shot, he had diff a few different locations and, and, and a couple of rooms to play around with. Here it is literally just two people sitting at a table, but he makes it work. All in all, The Place was a little bit of a disappointment. Not because it was absolutely terrible, but mainly because of an extremely anticlimactic ending, coupled a little bit, and this is my fault, uh, a lot of hype from the director's last movie. And ultimately that made the movie look worse than it actually is, because when you think about it, a 105 minute long movie about people just sitting and talking shouldn't be this interesting to watch. But Paolo Genovese knows how to direct people, how to get them to emote in the most subtle of ways, and he forces you, the viewer, to get extremely up close and personal with people in a way that you usually don't do in a movie. So that's that. That's the place. This was a little bit of a, just kind of a regular review, but sometimes you just have to do those as well. Please leave a thumbs up if you liked this video. Give a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Um, be sure to leave some constructive criticism in the comments down below. Um, subscribe if you want to see more reviews, of course. And if you really love this show and this channel, uh, be sure to go over to my Patreon and, you know, 
maybe donate a couple of bucks, you know, if you want to. But that's that. That's the place. And uh, until next time, have a good one. <laughs>